David uh, and I met a while back. Uh, I was on a, a training course with Adventures with Agile um, and David was, was running the course, uh, an excellent course, and we finished up with some uh, bubbles at the end, which was always very welcomed, which was great. Uh, very engaging course and I encourage you to um, look out for any courses that he's running. Um, they're very good. So um, David will be presenting to us uh, how to use the scientific method to test and build ideas. So over to you. Thank you. And I should just add that Bubbles was the only that was the only time I've ever bought Bubbles to celebrate the end because I think it was the launch of my previous book. Just oh, yes. to get that mentioned as well there, and to celebrate you finishing the course as a group. But yeah, <laughs> don't come on the course expecting Bubbles every time because you ain't going to get them oh. um, unless we go down the bar, and then I don't mind us all all, uh, all having a drink. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, yeah, when you said that um, this isn't about promoting anything, I'm not here to promote a company, but I am lifting what we're talking tonight straight out of my latest book, which came out two days ago. Uh, and so um, uh, I hope that that's okay as a, as a plug, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to promote a company. Right. So the plan for tonight is uh, I believe that everything we do, especially after work in the evenings, should be fun. So I'm going to try to make this fun with the exercises. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna explain what the scientific method is. It's pretty simple, it's four steps of something. And then we're gonna walk through a scenario that I've lifted from one of the exercises in the book. And then I'm gonna pre present you with a fictitious scenario that you are then gonna go off into breakout rooms of about five, six people, where you're then going to come up with an answer of how you would approach this, what scientific test and hypothesis you would create, and then we're going to share them uh, back as a whole group, and then we'll have a Q&A if we've got any time. So I think the, uh, what did we say about the Q&A? So people think, put them in the chat. We... Yeah, if we can put any questions in the chat, um, and we'll, if we get time at the end, we'll, we'll go through them if, we, if we're running out of time. Um, we will either use Meetup or, or Twitter uh, to answer those after the session. But obviously, if you've got questions about the stuff we're doing and, uh, and like, you know, I, don't, I don't understand that step, then just shout out, right? And we'll have a discussion about it. Um, and then if you're in, when you're in the breakout room, if you've got any problems, you can just flag us and, and I'll come in as well. Okay. Good to go? Okay, I'll let you admit other people coming in. So uh, just a quick intro, and this isn't a massive plug, but it, this is, it will make sense if I explain this. So the lemonade store is this fictitious story about three friends who have an idea about creating this lemonade stall in a local fun run. And they realize through their teacher teaching them, their kids, their teacher teaches them about the scientific method, and they realize the mistakes they've had, or the mistakes they've made in thinking that their business was going to be a success. And they go through a rebuild of this business for this this stall at the fun run uh, it's a short story uh, and then the other half of the book is 40 exercises to get you to think about how you might implement it at your work uh, in your organization what maybe you're doing that you could change kind of coachy challenging questions at the other half so I've lifted one of the scenarios from there the one that we're going to walk through together so first is first the scientific method it seems logical you'll think oh we're doing this already um, maybe, but if you are, then I suspect that uh, you're a great team rather than a good team. Right? So uh, it seems simple. We'll see how simple it is as you go through. So the first thing is you ask a question, you then investigate and get information about that question, <clears throat> form a hypothesis and test it, and then review the results you get. Right? Simple. This is the scientific method. But it is also, I like to call it, it's hypothesis, hypothesis driven product or service development. Okay, because scientific method sounds a bit like, well, I'm not going to dissect people, right? <clears throat> so here's a scenario. Um, imagine that you are um, a chicken farmer and you decide to go on holiday. And so you ask a friend to look after your chickens and you have a lovely holiday. Two weeks later, you come back and you find out that your hens have laid double the amount of eggs that they normally did while you were away. And so your question, presumably here, is why have my hens laid double the amount of eggs? Okay. And so then your next step is to gather information about the question. And so, excuse me, and then you say, well, what happened? So, well, the weather wasn't extraordinary. The um, 
the chickens all survived. There was no attacks. There was nothing strange on that. So nothing untoward there. Uh, and then you find out that your friend naturally has done two things. One is they've increased the size of the water bowl that they were, the water bowl that the chickens had. So they made they gave them a bigger bowl for some reason. And they also ran out of uh, of the chicken food, the hen party food brand that you normally buy, and uh, and they couldn't find the hen party food brand, and so they bought um, hen nom nom instead, a, an alternative brand, right? And so you've got this information that everything was the same apart from they had bigger water bowls and a different type of chicken food. And this is a simple example. Right? So you then form some hypotheses. You have two here. Right? You have one that a bigger water bowl made the hens lay more eggs. And you also have another hypothesis, which is that hen nom nom food made them have more eggs. All right. And then you test it and you can only test one hypothesis at a time because if you test them both you don't know which one's caused it maybe both have maybe only one has so you then test it now if you just gave the all of your hens a bigger water bowl and they had more eggs you wouldn't know if something else had had an impact on that so you have two groups of hens you split them down the middle one is the control group where you give them no change from your normal pattern. So they had the small water bowls and they had whatever food you're giving them. And then the other, the experimental group, you give them the larger water bowl, but everything else stays the same. So if, for example, the weather is better and all of the hens have more eggs, then you know that it's happened in both groups right? and it wasn't actually the water bowl necessarily. So you could then test something else. So you want these two groups, the control group, which is where everything stays the same, and the experimental group, which is the one thing that changes. All right. So with that in mind, what I'm going to do is give you this scenario and I'd like you to stick in the chat, which now I've just realized I've only got one screen at home. It's not going to be very easy for me to see your results. So I might have to see what I can do with Zoom here. Tell me if my if uh, my screen disappears. Hopefully I'll be able to see the chat. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here is the different scenario. Uh, we've got uh, Ali's Sports Shop and Ali has a local sports shop in a suburb of Cambridge and she wants to increase the sales of goods. Okay, so she does some research looking into what's going on and she realizes that some sports are seasonal some sport equipment sells more than others. She finds two specific things. One is that an expensive squash racket sells more than the cheaper versions, but it's the other way around with tennis rackets that actually cheaper tennis rackets are more popular than the expensive version. And Saturday, Sunday and Wednesday are the busiest days. All right. So this is our starting point. So with that information in mind, what questions might she ask? So not hypothesis, we're just asking the question, what might she ask if you were her, if you owned her business? So type in the chat what questions she might have. And then we're going to go into the investigating them and forming some hypothesis around them. Why are some days busier than others? Good. What age are her patrons? other questions I actually have when are university term times well okay too fast I can't read all of those uh, so why do some sorts why do some sports sell more products which of these factors have the biggest difference are there city squash clubs uh, tennis clubs in the city does she only open Sunday or Sunday Wednesday we will assume she opens every day but yeah good point that would be a, a simple explanation. What sports are popular in which season? Okay, yeah, good. So we've got a load of questions. Now, uh, for the slides, I had to pick and anticipate something you're going to ask. So I'm going to kind of lead us through. So one of the questions she asks is, how could I increase the sales of equipment of less popular sports? So I picked croquet, especially for you tonight, uh, thinking that was a fitting university themed sport. Uh, so one of the questions is, how could I increase the sales of equipment of less popular sports so she looks into that and she starts to gather some information now 
that would be too hard for us to speculate on chat. So I'm going to stick some in here. Um, she studies stuff like how many products each of them sells. She also looks into how much the other shops around local shops also sell for the products. Uh, she looks about the seasons and she finds, as you've said, uh, that there are local clubs for these less popular sports. OK, so she's got a load of information, kind of put a detective hat on. Then she comes to the former hypothesis stage. Right. So, oh, fucker. Hope you didn't see that. Turn that back. Edit that out of the video. So uh, what hypotheses could she create? This would be a test. If anyone did see it, go on and type it in if you saw it. So the hypothesis, let's try to see if you can remember the, the format that they went in. So what hypothesis could she have based on that information? So sponsor a local sports team. Could I sponsor a local sports team club? So remember on my chicken example, it was if I give the chickens a bigger water bowl, they will lay more eggs. So feel free to rewrite. She could definitely sponsor a local sports club, but what do we think will happen if she does? OK, so would sponsoring a local club make me sell more stuff? Yeah. OK, so that's the kind of thing. Yeah, so I said uh, that sponsoring a local sports club would increase sales for that sport. So what we want to do is the point of this hypothesis, we want to prove it's true or false. Right? So every hypothesis has to have the option of being false as well as being true. If there is no option for being false, it's a pointless hypothesis because you're not going to learn anything from it. Right? OK, good. So then we want to test it. So if we had a control group and an experimental group, how would you do it? Stick that in the chat. How might we form a control group and an experimental group for the hypothesis that sponsoring a local sports club will increase sales for that sport? Yeah, sponsor one sport and not another. Yeah, simple. All right, so uh, we would then sponsor the one or two, right? So maybe we could find two sports, sponsor two, don't sport, don't sponsor the other two. And then we could just see if, this ch if the sales change. Now, the important thing here is that just because sales in those two sports increases doesn't necessarily mean we've proven it. We've certainly not proven that it's false, but we would want to do more tests before we kind of invest millions of pounds in it, right? So. Uh, yeah, so control is do nothing, see how the sports, uh, the sales change, and the other one would be to sponsor it. Good. Okay, so you've passed the first test. That was to get you to thinking about these, right? So now the bigger challenge, and this is where we're going to go in breakout rooms, but we'll check if you've got any questions first. They're the four steps. So maybe do a screenshot or scribble them down if you think you're going to forget them. It is nearly half past seven after all. Uh, what we're going to do is we've got Cambridge cupcakes. I wish I'd picked an easier name. Uh, it's not the easiest thing to say fast. Uh, you've got Cambridge Cupcakes as your business. And what I'd like you to do is I would like you to think about, uh, come up with some wacky type of uh, subset of your business, if you like. So we're Cambridge Cupcakes and we're all about selling cupcakes by drone to students or whatever you want to do, right? Some Something a bit weird. Oh, there, if there's already one there. OK, I did not know that. So let's pick something else. Uh, <laughs> Cambridge Agile Cupcakes. Um, I don't want them stealing, stealing any of your crazy ideas. Uh, so think of a niche. Right? It makes it more fun uh, for you. Think about what might be going on in that business and then come up with a hypothesis. So if we do this, it will increase sales for whatever else, right? Or if we do this, it will do something. And then I'd like you to think about how you would test that hypothesis, okay? I'm gonna to have to stop sharing in order to give you um, some more information on that because I didn't think about this, did I? I put them both, put my notes and I put the slides all in the same place, right? So here we go. So you'll be splinter groups. 
Each group, that's right, think of yourself as the leadership team for Cambridge Agile Cupcakes or CAC, let's call it that for short. Uh, and you decide the niche of your organization. So I've given examples of healthy cupcakes, cupcakes delivered by drone to the people who are hard to reach, sailors, prisoners, drunk students, uh, designer cupcakes, whatever you want. You need to create some test to validate that your niche and any assumptions that you have is a sound one, okay? And so when you're gonna come back, we're gonna ask you to share what the question is, what the hypothesis is, and what method of testing that hypothesis you're gonna do. So what's in the control group and what's in the experimental group. If you finish in the time that you've got, if you finish thinking of just one, we're only gonna ask you to share one, but if you get through all of that and you've done one, then create a second, but we're gonna ask you to pick one of those to present back. I can give you 20 to 30 minutes to do this, because I don't know how, uh, tired you're all feeling so we'll see I might pop into your rooms and check on you every so often just to see how you're doing so we can kind of see in terms of time don't want you all sitting there bored if you've nailed it after 15 or 20 minutes so we'll aim for 20 how about that we'll aim for 20 and then we'll come I'll come and see you and see if you need more time but before we do any questions so I've run through that reasonably quickly because I want to get you thinking and doing stuff rather than listening to me did you say that our aim was to validate our niche with the hypothesis and the test? Yeah, I, I did. Well, I did say that, but you can, if you, if you want to validate just a section of it or, a, or one question in there, because it might be too hard to do the whole niche. Um, I mean, let's take something random like delivering, <clears throat> delivering cupcakes to sailors by drone. Um, it might be that we believe that uh, if we, if we deliver drones by cupcakes to seafaring vessels that they will be fresher or that yeah they will stay fresher longer than if they were done by van to a local store or something like that if they were sent through the Suez canal <laughs> yeah yes so it doesn't have to validate the whole business idea but yes it could be one element of it it depends how niche you're going with your niche and mine was a terrible example. Don't use that one, but I, that was an awful example of a hypothesis. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair Any other questions? Okay. Sorry, Gordon. So I was just going to say if we were okay to do the Zoom, uh, the breakout rooms. I think so. And then we'll see if you need a, a little break afterwards, but... Um, yeah, well, I'm good to go. Is everyone else good to go? Anyone need anything? So we said we're giving people... Um, Let's go 20 minutes. So 20 47, minutes. yeah, 47 past. For everyone right. to come back before we start. But for those who are back, you get a bit of a head start because you get to think. Uh, we're going to ask you to share one of your hypothesis, questions, hypothesis and tests. So if you've got more than one, think about which one. And also, who's going to actually share it? It'd be good. All of you going quiet because you're all getting kind of uh, camera shy. I think it is a time for a bit of a bit of a shakeout, bit of a dance. Maybe, yeah, yeah. I I keep doing that, and I've forgotten. I didn't actually tell people why I might be moving. Not because I've got some kind of dance well, tune in my head i went to a meetup and there was one guy i think he had uh, his desk set up with a either a running or a cross trainer or a sight pedal because he he was doing this all the way through yeah, it was yeah. quite unnerving or he just needed a wee maybe david oh uh, yes that's possible how's uh, how's the dog marcus oh uh very sadly gone this morning so 10 o'clock the trainer turned up and put her in the car and we said cheerio to her so um she's Which gone is... to be hopefully a guide dog so it'd be good if she does but um so we've got like a five month wait now while she's in training school to find out and then we get like a graduation photo or we get her back one of the two. <laughs> oh wow yeah for those right. other people that haven't seen me with the dog because you are done um i puppy walk or myself and my wife puppy walk for the guide dogs um and it, you just look after the puppy for the first about 14 months of their life. Oh, wow. Uh, it's really, really good. Really interesting. 
by letting it go. So I've just got a dog. He was he was a lockdown dog, and uh, so we had him a year yesterday. So I can't imagine letting him go now, you know, to somewhere else. But um, it was wow, incredibly hard. And we're but all back. I, I'm I'm glad the story ended that way because I thought that your dog had died when you said. No, as, as I was saying, I was like, "Who do you think has died?" <laughs> She's yeah, died. so I'm glad that it ended that. It's a nice. That's a nice ending to the story. Yeah. Uh, okay, go. we're all <laughs> we're all back. Uh, okay, so the plan is to hear your uh, question, hypothesis, and the way you're going to test it. Now, quick question for you all, uh, and I can't see you all. Let me go on here, gallery. Uh, do you want a few, a couple of minutes break to get water slash go to the bathroom slash whatever else you might need, or are you just happy to power on? So give me a thumbs up if you'd like a break of a couple of minutes. Nobody has put in. Okay, or like camels or something. Okay, uh, and you can go on. All right. Okay. So now then, we need to ask a brave person to nominate their group to share what they came up with. And oh, we're going to time box this up to five minutes per group. And so um, Farrah's got a timer on when, from when you start. Uh, don't, you don't have to use all the five minutes. If you present what you've come up with, and then we'll have a chat. Everyone, we can imagine that we're all there to try and help you uh, develop that hypothesis slash test. So we'll all chip in about suggestions of how we think it might be improved or bits that we particularly like or whatever. But the discussion for that group will stop at five minutes and then we'll move on to the next one. Just to make Give sure you a one minute warning as well so that you yes, know that cool, you've yeah. uh, got another yeah, minute yeah, left. Yeah. OK. Oh, I'm being invaded by a dog. OK, who is going to go first? You can't go first, dog. Who's going first? I will. Tony is. <laughs> I am. <laughs> okay. Go on then, Tony. So what okay. did you come up with? So we are Cambridge College Cupcakes, and we make cupcakes that have Birmingham University on them for the for the tourists, and we also make um, branded college cupcakes. But we've noticed that the drama students from St John's seem to buy quite a few cupcakes. They walk in with their sweatshirts on. So what was our question? Our question was um, um, something around, <laughs> come on guys, help me out. Uh, something around, do drama students eat more cupcakes than other clubs? So we're gonna gather information to see what days the, the clubs meet up, both in St. John's and in the other colleges. And we're going to see if there's any particular events. We're going to see what the numbers are. So we're going to maybe put out some surveys, ask them what their favourite flavours are. And we're going to form a hypothesis that if we put branding on the cupcakes with the college names. Uh, oh, I think I've gone a bit wrong here. <laughs> This is harder than it looks, guys. Um, oh, what was our hypothesis? Um, oh, do they sell better if they've got a branding on or if they're just plain cupcakes that just say Cambridge University? And then we're going to test the hypothesis by putting out the plain cupcakes for a week, logging our sales, and then putting out the different college branded cupcakes and see how they sell. Was that about right? Okay, that's it. That was pretty good, thanks. Okay. Great, yeah, so lots of time got, to spare. So we've got uh, that the hypothesis is that college branded cupcakes will sell better than just general Cambridge University cupcakes. Is that, we is that we did go off onto pitting the chess club against the drama club mm. and then the rowing clubs and and then could we go into chess themed cupcakes and um, we, we we went a little bit off piste we got quite excited about the possibilities. Well there's loads of hypotheses there as well right <laughs> so having a club based one would sell uh, better than others. okay but the one you went with is college based designs over a general Cambridge University design. That was one yeah. of the, the many. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then how were you, just to recap, you were going to test it by having both of those, the general one and then specific college ones. So for a week, a week, it would be, it would be just Birmingham University, Birmingham, sorry. 
I thought you said Birmingham. But I, 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 I went to university in Birmingham. I didn't go to university uh, in Cambridge. So <laughs> apologies. <laughs> um, yeah, so just general university cupcakes. And then we would have St. John's, King's College and, and see right. which ones sold the best. OK. All right. So what are the thoughts from everyone else on that? And that noise is my dog, if you can hear that, it's not me. So what is the experiment? I mean, how are you going to set it up? Um... How are we going to set it up? My question is Sorry. for Tony. She just mentioned an abstract description of the experiment, but I don't know how it's going to unfold. What is it really? What is the experiment? So she's going to have to, I think she said she was going to have all of those cupcakes, so the college ones and the general university ones, side by side, right, to sell? Um, I, I think what we wanted to do was we, we're, we're going to be making contact with the, the drama clubs from different universities and see if, say, they, they come and buy the cupcakes from us after a performance and 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 once we've figured found out that information of when are the busy times and and we've we've perhaps introduced a loyalty card for the the drama club students then then we would see if when they do come into the shop they buy if if they like ones that just say cambridge university on and then the next week they come in and it says the actual name of their college on are they going to buy more of those Is, is it worth our while being more specific with the cakes or are we better just keeping it as a general, it's a university cupcake? And we, so one thing, oh, sorry, Mary, you were going to say, carry on. You took no, 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 I was going to say thank you to her. I was just waiting for okay. Tony to finish. I'm making this up on the spot. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so I wonder if, 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 if this was our business, whether we'd want to make the hypothesis more specific such as we will sell more cupcakes in the week if we have an option of branded than if we don't have the option of branded but then we've got that problem of we'd need two stores maybe and uh, then it gets complicated because we we haven't really got a control group here we've only got an experimental group because we have only got one store for people to go in so um yeah, if we had a, a delivery option, then maybe we could deliver one with one and one with the other. So it'd be quite tricky. We, we could have we could have a little um, a, a trolley that we take out to the universities ah. on on the day that they have their drama club, and then see how many cakes get bought. So on one on one drama club, we actually take the branded ones, and then another drama club, we we just take the normal ones. It could be that on the branded ones, they take two because they want to give one to their friend as well. Whereas mm. when it just says Cambridge, they'll go, oh, I'll just eat it. I don't know. It could yeah, just or be. Or two trolleys, maybe. Even people time, just right? like cake. We don't know. Could be. And the two drama clubs could be different. Maybe we have two trolleys. You have one and someone else has one. And then you see which trolley they go to because then they're in the same place. Um, and it may just be the one that's nearest. So you might have to run a few tests. But at least then, yes we're cutting down the chance that we might affect it. Because if we just have one store and we find that we sell more cupcakes, it might just be that the vending machine in all of the colleges have broken. And so they eat more of our cupcakes if we don't have a control group. But maybe we're okay. playing on the, on the psychology of people identifying with the thing that speaks to them. So this is mm. why emails say hi, Tony on them. So they try to get my attention. Whereas if it said, hi, woman in Cambridge, that's not me. Well, mm. it is, but... <laughs> yeah. David, could I, cool. can I ask a question about this? Because I think in, in practical situations, we will often have one team that we want to experiment with. We won't mm. have two teams. So just thinking about this, if you only do have one shop and you want to mm. run an experiment, would it work to sort of say a random, randomised through the week, we'll have different displays for like maybe two hour slots and just over a period of a few weeks. So it's all random, randomized. We're 
trying the hypothesis that at the times when we've got the brand, the, the more specifically branded cupcakes out, we get more sales. Yeah. Could so the risk, the risk with this, I don't know how much time we've got left for this, but the risk <laughs> between these, between doing that is that if you don't have a control group and an experimental group, if you've just got the experimental group, then there might be another factor. So, you know, then you'd have to say, well, between four and six, we'll do the colleges on Monday, between four and six on Tuesday, we'll do the, the university one. Well, what if Tuesdays are more popular today than a Monday? Because we don't have that control group. So it and is then reverse that it the following week. Could do, but then what if one week was a bit, yeah, there's always other factors. So yeah, it's a bit it. like our chicken example is there mm. might be, you know, the weather is only ever that weather at one specific time. Yeah. So it is the, the, the scientific method and the hypothesis driven approach would be how could we split this? So rather than have it in the shop, like Tony was saying, have two trolleys going around with the cakes on, but rather than having one trolley in one group and another trolley in a different group, again, they're in different locations. So there is the factor there that something else might have a factor. So do we have the two trolleys in the same place? Okay, well then you've actually got the, the limiting the amount of other variables that are in there. Um, we are again, out of doing... time for a group one, okay. pretty much. Okay, All right. <laughs> Thank in you, some, group doing one. any test is probably more than most people do. Right? Even having that on a Monday at between four and six and a Tuesday and four and six is probably a lot more than most people. So, okay, thank you. Thank you, Tony and your group. Uh, we can double back on these if, uh, yes, if uh, if we want to after we've had the time. So who is next? Who's going to be brave next? He doesn't be brave or friendly. Thank you, Roy. So um, this is what we came up with. Oh, that's a presentation. So okay. we we are Cambridge Agile Cupcake Company, um, and our, our question is would a vegan cupcake company be more profitable the mm. idea being that because it's more niche than a general cupcake company it might attract more customers and they might communicate more so we've got various questions around that the hypothesis is adding the word vegan to an advert, which is otherwise two identical adverts, adding the word mm -hmm. vegan results in more responses. And we, we don't actually have this company, or it's completely MVP. So all we're doing is running two Facebook campaigns, identical except we add the word vegan into the title of, uh, of, of one and not the other. The same picture, same text otherwise. And the, the, the test is, sorry, that's a typo. Um, the test is whether the vegan campaign gets more clicks or not and run it with enough traffic to get statistically significant results. Nice. Okay. All right. What are your thoughts, rest of the group? I can't see anyone now, though. So I can't see. Just just start talking start, rather than start waving. Start sharing. So, so you can also... I'm okay. I can remember. So it's, uh, yeah, We've it's got uh, straightforward. Anne, um, with the hand up. I'm very impressed. I think one of the things that uh, we were talking about as well is like the cost of your experiment. Um, that looks like it's a relatively cheap experiment, which I think is a good thing because experiments can be very costly. Yeah. yeah. Good point. What else have we got? It uh, proves the hypothesis about the uh, responses to the advert. It doesn't actually tell you anything about um, whether the company will be more successful or not. Yeah, yeah. So the probably you'd want more tests and more hypotheses afterwards. But it, yeah, it, the output Stage was one. we'll know if more people will click on it with the word vegan, right? So that would that would validate or or invalidate the hypothesis, wouldn't it? But yeah, good point. There's other stuff. Don't go investing a million in it, Roy, just because of more clicks, right? <laughs> I think if there aren't more clicks, it might be worth thinking of a different idea, though. Uh, yes, yes. So proving it's failed may be a, a bigger warning than a, than a bigger tick, yeah. But again, we still want to test again, right? It may be just that how the word vegan was input or where it was put in the advert might not. Cool. What else? What other thoughts have people got? I kind of want to want to say, you know, I've, I've presented, but it wasn't just me. <laughs> so 
you know, Oscar awards and all that. So Gary, Greg, and uh, Maru, we were, were the team coming up with this. Okay, cool. So if there's no more comments on that, one thing that I also talk about in the book, which is about the scientific method is, there's a number of warnings that you might wanna heed um, in doing this stuff. So there's a, a classic one, which is, we read the results as we would like to hear them. Uh, so it could be that, yeah, we've got more clicks on that. And as Farrell was saying, it might be that, oh, OK, this is a business that can win. Right. This is going to this going to prove that we're going to get more sales. Clicks don't mean sales necessarily. Right. So it may just be that people are curious what the hell a vegan cupcake is, but are never going to buy it. Um, so, yeah. So uh, go on, Anne. Back when I was an actual scientist, the most interesting seminar I ever went to was a group of physical chemists who were trying to measure the dipole moment of the electron, and they went to ex great efforts to hide the answer from themselves while they were conducting the experiment. It was super interesting. I understood super interesting. The rest of your description went way over my head, Anne. <laughs> what were they measuring? The bipolar bipolar. Of a... They were measuring just the physical parameter. It doesn't matter what okay. it was, but they were measuring right. a physical parameter and it was something where they could do it um, critically. They could do it many, many, many times over, um, right. but they could hide that from themselves. They like, they went, they like put in like randomized data and all kinds of things that I don't actually understand because wow. I'm not a data scientist. But the point being is that they took great efforts not to um, bias themselves as to what the result would yeah. be. So nice. if you do have something where you have like lots and lots and lots of data, you can do that kind of stuff. It's interesting. Cool. Nice one. Thanks, Anne. We are out of time for group two, I'm afraid. Okay. Sorry, Gordon. But Gordon, scribble it down because we're going to have some minutes hopefully afterwards. So, uh, okay. So we've got two other groups to go. Unless Gordon, you were volunteering to, uh, to bring in your group, unless you've already gone. <laughs> unless anyone else from the group wants to kick off. No, it's fine. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, okay. So we we were a cupcake company, and we wanted to uh, expand upon uh, or expand into something like gluten free or low calorie. Um, we we were wondering what we should do, and we so we started off thinking about should we go delivery only or shop only, and then we thought that it was quite an expensive experiment to buy a shop and see whether we got more sales from a shop or not so we kind of canned that um which i kind of was gathering some sort of information um so then we decided we would um we would focus in on having a, a low calorie cupcake um and we gathered some information that um people that are generally quite sporty and things um prefer low calorie stuff so we created a hypothesis that said if we um, put a stool outside a gym, we will sell more uh, low calorie cupcakes than non low calorie cupcakes. So that was we, we did that and to, to test our hypothesis. Hey, Gordon. OK, what are our thoughts on this then? Where's the other stall located? We had spoken about just having sort of two plates on a single stall offering the people because we did consider, um, you know, one week and then the next week, but because we thought that generally, you know, most gym goers have a, a fairly regular cadence unless it's January the 31st and February the first week um, when everyone's New Year's resolutions stop. Mm -hmm. um, but we thought then that, you know, the weather might be bad on the second week, so people might not go to the gym or it might be really good weather, so they might not go to the gym. So we, we thought there was too many variables there. So we just put two plates on one stall. This is a bit similar to group one's scenario, isn't it? About keeping the variables low. Yeah, we sort of struggled around that control group and things. And yeah, how how... How could we create an experiment or test our hypothesis with a control group in something like that? 
because yeah, we uh, all the sort of tests that we thought about seem to have too many variables in um, yeah. different weeks and things. And even if you do the the, the locale to the to the spin class and the Zumba class got the the other one again, it might be that people go to one class are more likely to have a, a locale cake or iCal cake. And different times of the day, maybe, well, after work, you might be more tempted to have a cake than before work when your resolve is higher, right? So, or you've had mm. to get up early to get there, maybe you're more dedicated. So, yeah. Mm. yeah cool. Anything, Anything else? Anything else? And the other guys in the group? I think it was important to keep the price of the cakes and the appearance of the cakes as close as possible. And thinking about what one of the other groups said, to keep that experiment simple and cheap, we don't actually have to make those cakes. We can so buy, buy cakes from somewhere else and sell sell two plates of sell two sell one plate of um, low calorie cakes, one plate plate of normal cakes, and to keep the experiment cheap and prove our hypothesis without incurring too many costs. And depending on how ethical you are, and please don't do this with celiacs or, or nut allergies, but low calorie, you could just actually have the same cake, right? And just say one's low cal and one's not low cal. But then we get into ethics, which I don't want to open that, that can of cupcakes. Um, yeah, that would be even cheaper than Richard, right? You could just buy a massive load of cakes and just have them all the same. Yeah, I didn't say that, just in case there's anyone from any any ethical position coming. Depends on what it is that you're testing, right? So we had lots of ideas when we build all these hypo only single hypotheses. So how do you go and narrow down? Is it because you keep running surveys and tests uh, with people or you know how do you, we knew that if we go for a cheaper method it's better and all that so you have some standards but then you know if you have three cheap methods how do you decide to go to the gym or to do to go to a table tennis club or a ballet or mm. you know. well and I think the, there's a number of key things there one is if you test it in the ballet place you can't then apply that finding or those findings to the gym or to the lacrosse club or anything else because it's only that group of people so you'd need to do it in multiple places um, but something you just said was a key point that I think I should highlight which someone's put a link in the in the chat which I think would would also suggest this is that um, you said about getting a form or a survey or something what people say they would do and what people do do are massively different so um, I've had a number of businesses that were based on what people said they would do that then failed. Um, and unfortunately, I couldn't test them much beforehand because until I got the thing. So the first one was um, original artwork from students and people said they would buy them. Um, most people don't understand the difference between an original or didn't 20 years ago, 15 years ago, didn't understand the difference between an original artwork and a, and a print or, a, re or a, a mass reproduction. And so the idea was great. Everyone wants to own original artwork. And even when the cost isn't massively different, still don't really do it. So it's, I would get them to buy the cake and eat the cake rather than just say whether they'd buy the locale cake. Just as a point on that. We're out of time for this group as well now. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Right. Final group. Yeah. The summary of that last point was people are liars, basically. When they say they'll do, they don't. Um, okay. So last group, what do you got? Well, I'm one of them. <laughs> I might need Anne's help <clears throat> to phrase it in the right way. Uh, so our hypothesis was, we think by drone delivering cupcakes on a Friday to uh, remote working employees on behalf of their employers or their teams of their employers at least, um, there would be a market and what was it? They would then sell more things afterwards. Uh, was that it, Anne? I can't remember. It was quite a long time ago. Morgan, <laughs> was, Morgan, Morgan yeah. might remember. Yeah, I think, yeah that was pretty much <laughs> it. Nearly half past eight, think, yeah. Yeah, that, that was pretty much it. That, you know, yeah. If we delivered them on a, on a Friday, then people would eat them, get really happy and feel really productive and then 
sell more stuff for their for their company, yeah. which could then mean obviously we could extrapolate that and perhaps do some more tests afterwards, you know, to then say, right, well, are we selling more to happier companies or companies that are doing better and all that kind of stuff. But we thought the, the first test we wanted to do in the first hypothesis would be do delivering cupcakes on a Friday make people uh, make people sell more than you know not delivering them or delivering them on a Monday, for example. Or it might okay. come down to kind of staff satisfaction, sort of like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or attrition rates or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. What are your thoughts? So there's a few things I've thought. What are what are everyone's thoughts on that description? So a control experiment was we could try it on a Tuesday as well. Okay. Uh, and uh, I did suggest that f to, to bootstrap this, we could uh, just get the cupcakes from Tesco's before we had to make them ourselves just to test the water. You can buy big trays of them. So this as assuming that the experiment has already been done, that a drone delivery is worth it in itself. And that is data that we've already established at this point. Yeah, there I am worrying about the cost of the cupcakes <laughs> and have completely ignored the cost of the, all the drone technology. But um, uh, you might have already done this experiment already, so you know that it's worth it. And this is stage <laughs> two. Hey, David, it's fictional. You can say we've already tested that and we yeah, can yeah. get away with it, right? Yeah. Well, we said we could go into partnership with uh, perhaps with Amazon. Uh, who are developing this sort of stuff in Cambridge. So, you know, oh, look, we could use it on... There you go. Okay. It is only a fictional scenario, so we can get away with a bit of artist. Oh, learning. I was so, looking forward to my cupcake job uh, tomorrow. This is the thing. Cupcake sales around Cambridge will increase tomorrow. Um, <laughs> so just one thought on that, which a number of other people have suggested as well. So lots of you have come up with the questions or the hypothesis that is will... Da -da 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 -da. And these should be positive statements rather than questions. So if we do this, then we will get this uh, because then it's a pass or a fail. Uh, whereas if you say, will delivering cupcakes on a Friday be more effective than another day of the week? You've actually got multiple hypotheses in there because you've got variables of different days yeah. and then you would no. want to say other things as well. So everyone try to make them a statement that is either true or false. Yeah, so our hypothesis was on a Friday, you will sell more um, or, or whatever. Uh, and yes, the control experiment was doing it on a Tuesday. Okay. So we'll, so, so people who receive, if just get, if I think, this is what I think I've heard you say, if people receive a cupcake on a Friday night, they will be more productive or sell more products for their business than if they get a cupcake on a Tuesday. Is that what you're saying? I guess so. Well, I didn't know if the measure was then because yes. I, I got confused. I thought you were saying you'll sell more cupcakes, but what you're saying is they will be more productive as a worker, I think is what you were saying, is it? Yes. Okay. I'm not putting words in your mouth. <laughs> this is what I'm no, hearing, you're not. Isn't? You're right. I think that's what we're saying. Yes. Okay. okay. So what problems might we have with that? People. And it's not about picking your hard work apart, right? I'm just, we're trying to discuss how we might do them in a different scenario. But what factor might come into play that it may appear that that's, that this Friday is a better day, but actually it might be skewed by something else? So let's say the person, the people who receive the cupcake on a Friday, they then, over the next week, they sell 100 units of whatever it is that they do. And people who get the cupcake on Tuesday, on average, sell 50 units. So they sell half, half the amount that the Friday people do. What else might have happened? If they're salespeople, maybe they're on a, a bonus scheme for the week. And uh, that incentive makes them sell at a different rate. Yeah. I mean, what if, let's say we do it now, and so tomorrow some people get a cupcake, and then some people also get the cupcake on the uh, the, the Tuesday after. Uh, 
some people might have more incentive, I suppose, to... Well, if we're do, talking about the same period from Saturday to Friday, regardless, or we're talking about the week after, um, is it when they get the cupcake, as in halfway through the week, that they'd be motivated, or is it the day of the week? This is the question. So it depends when we're measuring the data of sale from, doesn't it? So if we start measuring from the Tuesday when they get the cupcake, or if we start measuring it from the Saturday before. So there's a number of questions in there of if they get a cupcake halfway through the week that we're measuring, that it won't have the impact as opposed to being the day of the week. But, but yeah, not sure if I've made that clear. Made sense to me in my head, but, but good. Okay, I suspect we're out of time, are we, Farrah, on that as well? We so. are, I was just about to call on the last group. Okay, so thank you all for that. Um, General thoughts, uh, general questions, general other stuff. People have scribbled maybe some questions down or some thoughts about other people's as well. So what else is going on in your heads? Or is it just dinner? Is that what's going through your heads? Go on, Gordon, you were going to... I think you were going to... No, I was just going to ask. Um, I don't think there's any direct questions in the, the chat, so I don't know if anyone had any other questions about... Uh, going to make an observation that uh, uh, David alluded to earlier uh, that a uh, hypothesis has two outcomes and they're both just data disproving a hypothesis is also a success it's not a not a failure I mean you're, mm. you had a hypothesis and it didn't turn out but actually it's success it's a success because you learn something about your system and about your uh, the behavior of your um uh, your business yes and actually far thank you for saying that because i said that in the book there was a story and there were 40 plus exercises but there's actually a couple of three pages i think it is a little essay in the middle which is me explaining that that's one of the major points here that yes you're doing the test failure is a dirty word in lots of places but actually this is about learning and if you if your hypothesis fails and you've learned then that's a success the real failure is when you do a test and you don't learn anything and it fails then obviously that is a that is a failure right because there's no learning and there's no success in the business as well but, i once sorry, worked I on a project um which was a database of failed experiments um, for large scientific companies they were finding that uh, they weren't learning and that they needed to know what didn't work because people were just repeating mistakes so it was hugely mm -hmm. useful to them in the scientific world itself Cool. You know. How will you apply this in a software environment? And will you make like some small softwares and give it to some people or, you know? Software or hardware? Software. Okay. So we're we talking about a, a change in a software, in a piece of software, or a whole product in itself? I mean, uh, well, it could be we're doing small improvement adjustment features or completely new product or things like that I and mean, if you're a completely new product then you've probably got a load of hypotheses to test and so one of the things there is what's the most significant thing that you want to test that if you don't know the answer to is going to cause you to fail i would say so listing those well that's one of the exercises is what are the assumptions that you've made about your product or service that you actually don't know the answer to and how can you go about establishing whether it's true or false? Because you may be successful even with something that's a terrible part of your product or service because it's still successful with it, but it would be even more successful if you didn't have it in there as well. It's not all about adding stuff in. It can be about taking stuff away as well. But I feel that's a, a totally uh, new meetup discussion that you've, uh, you've just opened there about that, but uh, maybe we could run... Maybe we could run that when we're in person. I'm looking for those forward to those moments. I, I can um, I can add another one if you like, which is, is sort of, in a way, Iona's question was about the product, but what the same question about the process. You know, if we're if we're talking agile, if we're talking improvement, how do we run experiments? On how do we know for sure if we've actually 
the change that we made to the way that we're building the software, the change that we've made to the way that we're working, mm. how do we know that has actually increased our performance as a team? Yeah, that is a good question. And again, if we're making multiple changes, which ones have made the improvement as well? Really? So, even, even without that complication, how yeah. do you know if we just make one change? Yeah. How how can we test that? Do you, if, is that in your book? Uh, not in terms of retrospectives, no. But and now you bring it, Roy. <laughs> two days just after I published it, where where were you two years ago? <laughs> Sequel. Yeah, no, no, don't. I don't need another book, please. Don't <laughs> we do, do that. We do. <laughs> don't do that. Um, has, has someone else written the book that answers my question? Yeah, maybe the, there's the question. That's. I'd rather answer that question and look into and finding the answer out to that. But yeah, cool. Um, that would. I but mean, again, and, seriously, David, that would be so helpful because that's you know that's the th that's the thing we really really need is we're 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 trying to improve process. How do we know if we have? so difficult to know the answer to that yeah well and and surely the i mean and this is just my initial thought is that we can't have a control group there uh, sorry we can't have yeah we can't have a control group because we've only got the experimental group because our team is not like any other team is it exactly yeah and each team is unique so um, we need to clone there we go there's my answer you're all you're all cambridge scientists for the looks <laughs> of it you need to clone the team so you can have a control and experimental group or holograms um and you had a question in the chat i see and you're... i did but i want to say something to that so a really good example of something during covid where it's not been possible to run an experiment is wearing masks so it's a very good example of where it's not possible to do an experiment like it's like people have because they have crazy political ideas but there it was really important that we acted on a sparsity of information that it wasn't possible to test and um, so I think it's important to know when um, you shouldn't be running tests because that kind of thing happens especially in really uncertain environments mm. yeah. so some of you have probably come across Kenevin Dave Snowden's and Cognitive Edges yeah so that sounds like that, right? And it's, it's the chaotic domain uh, is just act first, right? Yeah. yeah. If you've not come across Kenevin, I'll stick a link in at the meetup group or on your Twitter account, or one of you can, because it's uh, it's worth having a look at if you've not come across it. Let's start with a C, by the way. Sorry. Well, so the Einberg presentation, she gave one meetup talk on Kenevin. Ah. Uh, yeah, I did one at Agile Reading. Hold back. Ah, there we go. And I'll let you put a, put a link into the group then as you're a, a regular, by the looks of it. David, sorry, you were going to say something. Well, well that, that was the dilemma over the European med medicine agency, what were they called, uh, about pausing vaccinations with the um, uh, Oxford AstraZeneca uh, thing, where they looked at five cases of blood clotting. And thing. Anyway, that's a whole rabbit hole isn't it so but um yeah when when do you not have to prove something before you can continue because the flip side of that is people die from covid is that yeah. greater than risking blood clots yeah and i'm hoping that I'm, I'm preaching to a group here that aren't in something that's quite as life and death so i'm not saying that hypothesis should always be used yeah maybe can everyone would, would give us a good framework to think about that as well but um Okay, look, at risk of you, some of you starting to drop off because you're going to eat uh, and stuff, I'd just like to say thank you. Um, my two key message takeaways would be that the scientific method or hypothesis is a, a robust way for us testing ideas and assumptions, and it gives us a structure that teams often lack. So maybe not always relevant, but what could you do would be my question. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. So yeah, that's that's really interesting. Definitely, some uh, it's quite hard to to think of those hypotheses, but something I'll definitely be trying myself. Um, so thank you very much. Okay, so just to finish off the evening, just to remind you that um, in April we'll have uh, Agile Systems 
uh, coaching case study that we'll we'll have on. So look out for the meetup. And obviously June we is still to be confirmed, but we will um, let you know as well. Um, so do keep the conversations uh, going. So many thanks, David, again uh, for speaking this evening, uh, and thank you to everyone for joining. Um, if you do have any other questions. Um, please do put them on to meet up or, or in, in the Slack channel. Uh, and I'm sure we can probably get them over to David and, 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 and answer them uh, in due course. Um, so if you'd like access to the Slack channel, do let us know, we can give you a link. Uh, and obviously keep in touch on Twitter and Slack if you're on there. Thank you very much. Cheers, everyone.